This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Andrea Selich with me again. You are the Director of Audiology at Hearing Solutions. Thank you for joining us again. Kathy, thanks for having me on the show. Now, May is Better Hearing Month, so we're going to talk about that. Absolutely. It's exciting to be in May because it's a call to action for people. Um, you know, hearing loss is, a, is it's silent, like not meaning to be funny in that you, you don't notice it. it it's, a, it's, a, it's a deficit that creeps up on people and um, I, that's why I believe it's so important for us to, to draw attention to it in May because uh, people will learn many coping mechanisms and ways to, to, to get by and not realize that the hearing loss is having a greater impact on them than they, than they might have realized. And so anytime we have the opportunity to get people into the clinic and, and let them know what's going on with their health is, is something I feel really passionate about. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and like one area of concern, I know as a social worker point of view, I, I've, I've heard these conversations, but you and I spoke before we started taping too, and it is an area of concern that people can talk to you about. People have been at home, they've been working in, you know, pretty peaceful environment for two years. They go back to work and they find the noises and some, some background noises a little overwhelming. Absolutely, really common. And uh, it, it's, it goes hand in hand with how I was mentioning that hearing loss is, is sort of sneaky, it sneaks up on people. Um, people often draw the conclusion that in a good environment, when they hear well, that their hearing must be fine. So in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they'll report, you know what, uh, I don't notice a problem, I can hear okay. Um, and then as they get into situations that, have, that are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more um, difficulty related to things like background noise, for example, or multiple people talking, uh, and that's where they'll find they'll have a, a harder time. Um, and so exiting the, the pandemic, you know, We've been at home for a while. We haven't been engaged in as many social situations. And so we may have acclimated to um, more calmer situations or where there's a little less complexity going on. And so going back into work environments where there can be uh, people talking from various directions, maybe more than one person talking at the same time, uh, maybe background noise you're dealing with. Those are classic things that are going to tip people off. Um, and if you're having problems in some of those situations, but not in others, that's an, a definite sign that there could be an underlying hearing loss. All right, all right. Now, now you and I have spoken about this before because we both say it differently. I call it tinnitus, you call it timidus. Uh, yeah, 37... and both are, both are correct. So, so for anybody at home wondering and doesn't want to use the word wrong, both are considered correct. All right, and 37% of Canadians experience this. Absolutely. So this is a, a buzzing, a ringing in the noise uh, in your ears and uh, it's typically a sound that you're hearing and it's not in the environment. Other people aren't hearing it. Um, and it can be quite distressing for people, especially if they don't know what's causing it or where it's coming from. Um, it can be experienced a, a wide variety of different ways. So people will experience different levels of it. Um, so it can be louder for me and less loud for the next individual. Um, and they can experience it different. Some people will say it's a whooshing. Other people, it's crickets. Um, some people say it's, describe it like an air leak. And um, it's, a, it's on its own, it's not a concerning symptom, but it's often associated with something else. And hearing loss is one of the, the biggest things that it's associated with. So we do tell people for anyone who's having bothersome tinnitus, anybody who's, who's noticing it to a degree that it's, it's causing them any distress, um, certainly it's worth checking into it and, uh, and seeing whether it's associated with an underlying hearing losses. Uh, treatment for, for tinnitus is often the same as we would for hearing loss. We treat the hearing loss and we're often treating the tinnitus at the same time. All right. Now, hearing loss is twice as common with people in, with diabetes as well. Absolutely. So uh, diabetes just like it can affect things like uh, nerve pathways or extremities, our eyesight. Um, it's no surprise that it can also be affecting our, our hearing. And so um, we're generally recommending that people get their hearing tested somewhere around the age 60, 65. Uh, for anybody who's uh, experiencing diabetes, we would certainly um, recommend that they're getting their hearing tested much sooner, uh, 50 or 55 um, at least, or certainly if, if they're noticing any of those symptoms, not to put it off because for the average individual, they're going to put off doing anything about their hearing uh, for quite a while. Um, the data tells us somewhere um, seven to 10 years for, for most individuals uh, from the point where the hearing loss develops to them coming in and doing something about it. Um, and so if, uh, if you have some of those, those risk factors, uh, we would certainly recommend having it checked up a little bit sooner. And you've spoken of this before too, Andreas, and it's like we go get our eyes tested, we go get our teeth checked, we go for physicals, we should get our hearing checked as well. Absolutely. There's multiple reasons. I mean, some people are still worried about the stigma of, of hearing aids. I don't want to get my hearing checked because they're worried about hearing aids. And uh, I mean, the, the attitudes towards hearing aids have changed greatly. I mean, first of all, they're far more discreet than they ever were before. So uh, most of the time, they're not even noticeable. Uh, many of the, the newer styles look like technology because they are really, they look like an earbud and 
Um, it's not just that we're, we're making it look that way. They're also acting in that way. They're connecting to things like television and Bluetooth, uh, to cell phones for streaming. And so uh, it's not just an amplifier making sounds louder. It's really something meant to um, improve life for, for everybody. And so if cosmetics are the barrier, um, certainly that's not, not something we need to be worried about anymore. And uh, from the other point of view, I mean, I know the idea of, of having a hearing loss isn't appealing. I mean, of course, if we could not, not have to deal with that, that would be wonderful. But um, not having your hearing check doesn't prevent the hearing loss from happening. If it's going on in the background, it's happening anyways. We may as well just be equipped with that information and uh, know what we can do to prevent it or know what we can do to treat it. Um, or if nothing else, just be well informed and understand what's happening in different situations. And I mean, this is a good point too. Using a hearing aid keeps your brain fit. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> lots of data has been evolving. You know, one of the, the, the most important pieces of, of data around that um, showed that for, for cognitive, de cognitive decline of all the things that we can do to uh, reduce our risks for things like Alzheimer's, um, hearing is, is the number one modifiable risk factor. So there's a number of things that we can't really do anything about, uh, but all the things that we, we have control over, hearing is one of the ones where we have some control, uh, and it's the biggest factor that we can control. So um, having your hearing checked and, and being a little bit more proactive about hearing treatment is, is something that has effects beyond just, you know, needing to repeat and saying pardon. It has effects in how our brain is, is developing and changing. And um, it's really important for us to keep our brain stimulated and to allow us to engage in the situations that keep our brain stimulated. You know, there's a big difference between going to an event and, and being an active participant in that social, social encounter and smiling, laughing along and sharing a story is really different participation in that social situation than it is to just be present and smile and nod along. And that's one of the reasons we believe that um, wearing hearing aids is, is protective um, for cognitive decline. And, and sometimes we notice that with family members or friends as well too, as you know, you know them well enough, they're not getting the conversation, they're not understanding, they don't know what we're talking about. Sometimes it's them that has to address this first. Absolutely, and so it's, it's far more obvious for us to be fumbling through a social encounter um, and, and smiling and nodding yeah when the real answer should have been a no. That's far more obvious to somebody than um, having a hearing device. So absolutely. Um, because it's easy for us to sort of put it off and, and we, we kind of get used to the deficit, um, it is very, very common for loved ones and people close to us to notice first. So take those to heart. Um, our, our initial instinct is defensiveness. Uh, don't tell me there's something wrong kind of attitude. Um, but it comes from a good place. When our loved ones are noticing something, uh, it's probably true. And that's a good indicator that you're working harder than you need to. We don't realize it, but when we're dealing with a hearing loss, our brain is paying the price. We're telling our brain to pick up the slack and make up for a deficit. And that means your brain is working overtime in the background, trying to figure out what's missing. It's using your knowledge of the language, of the context, lip reading, all the other bits of information at its disposal to try and, and source together enough information to get by. And that's a lot of extra work that, that we shouldn't be putting on our brain. It would be a, a lot more easy and comfortable, a lot less stressful uh, to just have a natural conversation and then force our brain into overdrive that way. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, this is just a question of interest. You know when you're driving down the highway and you've got your music cranked up, maybe probably a little too loud, and but you think it's all right, but then you slow down, you get to a, a small town or you have, to, you have to lower your speed limit, and then all of a sudden it just seems like it's way too loud. Why is that? Absolutely. It's a, it's a great observation. It's a, it's a great way of showing how your brain is adapted. And so your brain will adapt to all kinds of different things. In this scenario, your brain is adapting to the fact that there's a lot more road noise. Road noise from the tires, your engine's revved up higher when you're driving, there's more wind um, turbulence. And so not having all that extra noise, you're going to turn up the signal, the, the music in this case, or the radio that you're listening to, uh, to a point where, where the signal to the noise ratio is favorable, where what you want to hear is above the noise. And when you slow down, well, there's a lot less wind and tire and engine noise going on. And so your brain's saying, well, that's too loud. I don't need that anymore. Uh, and so it's compensating. And uh, technology is designed to do the same. Some car manufacturers have uh, designed the car to be adaptive and keep up with that to some degree. Um, hearing aid technology works in a similar fashion where it's analyzing the environment and it's deciding what to do. Uh, it usually tries to reduce the noise rather than crank up the signal, um, which is which is better. Um, but anytime um, we can we can give our brain that advantage and not force it to compensate for us, it's it's, uh, it's a good thing. Oh, now I was doing just a little bit of homework last night for our conversation today too, and and I saw a Barbie doll had a hearing aid. Have you seen that? I have. It was wonderful, and so it's uh, one step closer to to greater awareness for for things like this. I noticed. Um, 
a year or two ago, Lego did something similar. And so Lego had um, a hearing aid um, head for, for some of their Lego figurines and now Bar Barbie's done the same. Um, and I think just it's a wonderful thing to normalize um, the idea of, of hearing. I mean, it's um, quite common to see dolls wearing glasses. Um, a future where, where hearing aids aren't viewed as, as something that would be an oddity is, uh, is the direction we're heading because the new generation is, is a little bit more interested in living the life that they want to live. And if they're going to uh, buy tickets and go to the theater, well, they may as well enjoy the theater rather than, uh, than miss out on half of it. And um, that's what technology is allowing us to do. And I mean, when we're talking about any kind of hearing problems too, it's not always adults, it's children as well. Absolutely. <laughs> One of our, uh, our partner manufacturers is um, for a long time been giving stuffed animals with, uh, with a hearing aid on it uh, and a little book that goes along with the story for that, that character. And that helps um, the, the children who are, who are dealing with a, a hearing loss uh, not feel different from their peers. It normalizes it for them. And I think that's a good thing. Well, that's excellent. I've seen like teddy bears, you know, that teach children how to use an inhaler and that sort of thing. So this sort of thing, they can put a hearing aid on their doll or, or their teddy bear. And, Just yeah, so, yeah. It, it, see, it makes it more normalized. Absolutely. Thank you very much for telling us that. Thank you for joining us today, too. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up, Andreas? No, the biggest thing with, with the call to action for, for their <clears throat> hearing month is, is really just go get your hearing checked. And, and what I tell people is, is that that first step, make it into clinic can often feel like a big barrier. It's, it seems like a lot of hassle, a lot of work. And if that's too much for people, um, an easy step on the way there is, is screening. And so we have an online hearing screener at hearingsolutions.ca. Um, it's quick, it's easy. You do it from the comfort of your own home. And that might help you separate whether you know, there's enough of a, of a reason to go and get a full assessment done or whether you can maybe put it off for another year. Um, it's quick, it's painless. Um, I think that's a lovely first step for anybody who's maybe feeling a little bit of nervousness about going into a clinic. All right, so that, that's an email we can get hold of you. Is there any other way we can get hold of you, Andreas? You can all, uh, phone any of our clinics. Um, all of our <coughs> clinics are available also um, online at hearingsolutions.ca. You can see uh, where all of our territories are. And uh, if you or a loved one um, needs to come in, we'd, we'd happily take your call by phone. Um, by the web or, or however you want to reach. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much for sharing all your knowledge. And, and it's such an area of interest for myself too. So uh, like I always say, I can go on talking to you forever here, but uh, I have to let you go, I guess. <laughs> it's always a pleasure and it's, it's something I'm passionate about. So if, yeah. if we can get even one, uh, one more person into a clinic and, and uh, accelerate that pathway for them, I feel we've done good work. Oh, that's just great. Well, Andrea Sulic, you're the Director of Audiology at Hearing Solutions. Thank you for joining us again here on FYI. Thanks so much for having me on the show.